So if you're a tech head like me, chances are that you probably have a couple of different PCs lying around your house and sometimes it can happen that you have no idea what to do with them. I'm talking about making it a home server to host something like Nextcloud, Transmission, IRC and anything you want really. It's really easy and straightforward and today I will show you my setup and what it looks like. So with no further ado guys, let's check it out. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that uh, prior to having like a custom built PC, I had this MacBook over here. Uh, I've had this since 2010 or something like that. Uh, and as you see, it's <laughs> it's signed by Richard Stallman and it's, it has some nice FSF stickers on it. And it's serving decently well as a server. As you see, it's not in a particularly good shape. Uh, I can turn it on and you see uh, the screen that is always useful for backup. I turn off uh, the ACPI control for the lid close action. So if I close this up, uh, the screen is gonna stay lit for for a while, but it's gonna turn itself off after two minutes or so. You see this Apple over here indicates that the screen is still lit, but it's gonna turn off soon. But anyway, any any PC will do. This machine has a Core 2 Duo CPU paired with 4 gigs of RAM and an, a, an old NVIDIA dedicated GPU. I can't remember the name right now. It's probably 9400 or something like that. 9400M probably, but it's not very important. You won't need the GPU for what you're doing here. So just grab an old PC and set it up. I installed Ubuntu Server 16.04 Xenio and it works like a charm. The only problem, but this is particular to this machine, I can't reboot it because if I reboot it, uh, it just freezes. So it, this is just a problem with this particular machine. And as you see, I've got the power cable always plugged in and an ethernet cable that goes straight to my router here. As you see, it's just coiled up like that. Uh, I know I should cable manage this probably better, but it will do for now. And I also have this power outlet down here. And I've got the router plugged in and the server. And the power cable for the server goes all the way down here and just rests here alone. Uh, it's hidden, it's not inside, so it will do. Besides, it doesn't heat up too much, so it's really fine. And then over here, I have my setup. And as you see, here is the server up and running. Let me just refresh it for you. Yes, it's pretty, pretty fast. And you can even access it remotely. So I will probably show you how to do this and how to set up your old machine to make it a server and host your own cloud in there. So this is pretty much what my next cloud instance looks like. Uh, I changed the colors and the icon just because I don't like defaults. And I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You drag and drop files into here to upload them to the cloud and you have your folders you can navigate. It's just it's just a generic cloud service, but the nice thing is that it's self-hosted and it's basically my server one meter away from me, and this is, this is something I really, I really like. Just to have you know that peace of mind of knowing where my files are. You have some other apps on top of here. You have activity where you see basically uh, what you have done. It's basically a user log gallery for seeing all your photos in one place. Uh, and then you have some plugins that you can install. Uh, they're still called apps. I, I prefer to call them plugins. As you see here, I have a plugin for video calls, which can be handy. I still have to try it in more serious situations, but as far as I've seen, it works. A mail plugin where I have my work email synchronized. It's just basically a mail client. I mean, it's just an email client. You have it on your server. So 
again, can get useful. Contacts, same thing, pretty straightforward. A calendar where I have my work calendar and music where I have, uh, well, all of my music. As you see here, I have a music folder where I have, where I have 9.2 gigabyte of music. And I can just open up this up here and listen to my music wherever I want without keeping it without keeping it on any of my devices to take up space. You have some other options. Uh, you can share files uh, with other users and by email with a link. Again, handy features. Then you have your contacts here where you can like, make a quick search and this cog here where you have some options like personal, admin, apps, users, help and logout. It's not as fancy as you would expect, but it's pretty useful. Now, installing Nextcloud isn't difficult, but it's not that easy either. So I will leave down in the description two links to a couple of tutorials I followed from DigitalOcean. Uh, this is how to install and configure Nextcloud on Ubuntu 16.04. And this is how to uh, secure your Apache server using Let's Encrypt. Now the thing about uh, using Let's Encrypt or any SSL certificate provider is that of course you will need to, you will want to have a secure communication with your server. So you probably want to use HTTPS. And to do that, you need a certificate. You see here, my connection is right now is secure. I have a certificate with Let's Encrypt. And to have a certificate, you need a domain name. Now you could do a couple of things. There are several services like no IP that provide you free domain name services, but I, I've had quite a bad experience with most of them. What I suggest you to do is that for $15, you can buy yourself a custom domain. Uh, I suggest you this website called Nyala. Nyala is, uh, if you don't know about it, it's a domain registration service made by the guys over at the Pirate Bay. And these guys are really serious about privacy and having your data secure. And it's really, really easy to get started. You just have to type in your the domain you want and press search, as you see here, you have the pricings for any kind of domain. You can just go with a $15 one, I mean, .com, .net, .org, they all work pretty fine. And you can just register your domain to your server's IP. I used a third level domain uh, with a domain name I already have. So nextcloud.librecandy.org. Librecandy is a project I'm working on. <laughs> You'll probably hear about it. Um, probably at the beginning of next year. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, is, uh, when you register to Nyala, you have to give it some data, of course, and you have to pay them. But uh, you can protect your information uh, to the point that you can even write fake information or even partial information about about your identity. And it all comes for uh, starting from $15 and I think it's a pretty good deal. I mean, this is listed as 50, 15 euros, but I'm pretty sure that in, or in the US you will pay just $15. So once you have your domain name set, you can just go ahead and use this tutorial over here to secure your Apache server using Let's Encrypt, which is a uh, free certificate provider. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward. You have uh, some helpers, like you have CertBot here, which is really a really simple tool that helps you to get your certificate on your server and to attach it to something like Apache or Nginx. And as you see here, I have it attached to my Apache instance running Nextcloud. And this is basically it. I mean, it doesn't get more complicated than that. I also have other services right now on my server. So of course I have SSH. So this is an SSH ses session uh, so that I'm connected to my cloud server. 
As for SSH, I suggest you to turn off root login and to enable authentication using your public key. I'm sure that a little Google search will help you with that. It's not difficult at all. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. I also have a, a couple other things I wanted to show you. I have a persistent ARC, uh, IRC chat open on my server and I attach to it using Tmux. I, I also made a really simple um, shortcut to open this right away and I can detach it and leave it open just by pressing Control B and D. And I have it detached now. One other thing you can do uh, and that I think it's pretty nice is having a transmission instance on your server. Uh, so on the server I have transmission daemon running and this is transmission remote GTK which is well it's a remote for uh, a it's a controller for a remote transmission instance you can just um, I can just I mean see it something I um, downloaded cubes which is a secure privacy and security oriented Linux distribution and I can just see it right away from here if it does work, it should be working. <laughs> and it's seeding, yeah. It's working right now. There are no seeds. There, there we go. There you see, one seed is trying is downloading from me. You can contribute back to the community by just running this little thing on your server. It doesn't take up too much connection. I mean, you can even set some limits. So like 25K of maximum upload speed or whatever you want, really. It's not really any problematic. And I can just download anything I want using Torrent and just turn off my PC and just have the torrents downloading and sitting for as long as I want because the server is made to be running 24 seven. So I never have to think about turning it off or anything like that. Now there are a variety of things you can do with the, with the server. Nextcloud is like the first thing you may possibly want to do because you basically get most of the service you you may need from any other external service. So um, you you can replace Google Drive and Spotify if you have a big collection. You can just um, put everything in your Nextcloud instance. You can replace Google Calendar, Google Contacts. Uh, about the email, this is just an email client, so we'll probably need a uh, fully fully fledged uh, mail service. You can host it on your server. I chose not to do that since I don't feel like I need to do that right now. But if you want to, you can host your very own mail server on your server. So um, there's even that. And I mean, the addition of having um, a Linux box I can SSH to anytime I want or having a uh, transmission running on it anytime I want and my IRC client that is always on and I can just check out whenever I want and I can brow just browse the history seamlessly and read whatever and maybe I, I have to ask something and I have no time to wait for the answer and I don't want to leave my PC on. I can just use this detached client here. So ask my question, just detach the, the session, the Tmax session and reattach it everywhere, everywhere I want, even on my phone when I'm on the go. I think it's pretty useful. One other thing you have to do to ensure uh, that your server is reachable outside of your local network is to configure port forwarding. To do that, you have to get into your router settings. As you see here, you just write your uh, router IP. And uh, a nice way to find what your router IP is, is just opening up a terminal and writing IP R, which means route. And you see default via uh, 192.168.1.1 .1 .1 is usually your gateway and uh, most of the times your gateway corresponds to your router so you just write this down onto your uh, browser and you have your router configuration page you can just go uh, I mean this is Netgear Genie uh, the Netgear 
um, configuration page tool for Netgear routers. You can just go to advanced. Uh, I think it's an administration. No, advanced setup. Port forwarding and triggering. There we go. And you can just add any service that you want. So as you see, I have um, this actually. This actually needs to be changed, but I have Nextcloud SSL. So um, this is uh, the forwarding for the port 443. So basically, what it means is that um, when a connection, when a client asks my router for a connection port 443, it routes this connection to 192.168.1.10. This is the IP of my server. And this basically does the same thing with port 80, um, which is the HTTP port. I also have to change this one. I used to connect to my desktop PC using SSH, but right now I prefer to uh, SSH to my server instead. So I can just change the IP here and press apply. And now when I, oh, I have to edit it again. I have to edit the, the name cloud SSH apply. There we go. So whenever I connect to my, um, to my home network on port 22, I'm talking to my server. This is of course very different depending on your, on your router, on your, uh, uh home network configuration. And be aware that some ISPs don't want you to run a server in your home and you have to check your contract details to see if you can do that. But I'm pretty sure that in most parts of the world, except the US and some other countries, you could be able to do that without any problems. My ISP doesn't care really with, with what I do with my home network. So I think you may have uh, similar luck. So just check out your contract details or just call your ISP to see if uh, they allow you to do this. So of course you don't need to have like an old PC or you don't really need to build a, a machine specifically for using it as a server. Uh, what I suggest you to do is either using an old PC that you have lying around or if you don't have one and you really want a home server, you can either uh, use a VPS or virtual private, ser private server uh, on a service less on a service such as DigitalOcean or OVH or any similar service, or you can do something easier and just go up on Craigslist or any other website similar to that that you may, may be using in your country and just look for some old PC under a hundred bucks, and you can basically spin up that PC, put it in a corner or uh, close to your router and use that as a home server and it will work just fine. I mean, the machine I've been using has something like, it has almost 10 years now and it still works like a charm, at least for a server and it's and it does its job. If you want to get more serious than that, you may probably want to build a full-fledged desktop uh, or desktop-like server uh, using something like a RAID array to uh, make sure that your data is secure in server and if the hard drive fails you will still have your data and you won't lose it. So these are all the options that you have in your hands and I hope you like this video even if uh, I didn't explain you how to do this stuff uh, I hope it was inspiring for you. It's really that simple. You just have to uh, get your hands on some hardware and have like a spare day or two to configure the whole thing and you can just play around with it and I, I think it's pretty fun. So guys, this is gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Also make sure to check out the TechPills website at techpills.technology. You will find the link in the description down there. Again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.